everyone welcome back to the integrity botanicals youtube channel today i am reviewing some more rms and i did just do their cream shadows but today we are doing the rms swift shadows which are their sort of companion but in powder form so i haven't even featured these in a tutorial i don't believe so i'm actually really excited to share them with you guys 18 beautiful shades they do actually separate them into color categories which i think is really cool and um let's just get straight into the packaging first and foremost they are singles so singles are never my most favorite way um to store eyeshadows i'd rather just put them in a z palette which we also carry i will link those down below just a magnetic palette um but for the sake of showing you how they will come they are in this little white cute square as far as single shadows are concerned it is relatively compact relatively thin then we just pop it open there's no mirror or anything in these i don't really think it's necessary and then we have the shadow right there and the name on the back to differentiate them within your collection. So really, really super simple. They are able to be popped out if you do want to store them in a Z palette relatively easily. So if you have like a little magnetic piece to get the edge out and uh, not harm the eyeshadow, that is what I most definitely recommend. Um, so formulation on these, um, their powder eyeshadows, like I said, um, come in 18 different shades and they are formulated with Buriti oil and jojoba oil. So they are not meant to be more of a drying formulation, which is kind of nice. As always with natural brands, you sort of get that more hydrating, um, look kind of better on the skin nourishment, which I appreciate within these products. Um, all of them do have that more sort of light reflective finish, some of them more so than others, and you will see that as I go down the line swatching these products, but they are, um, I personally like to layer them with the cream shadows. So you can use them alone, dry, you can use them wet alone, or you can layer them with the cream shadows, which is what I've gone ahead and done today. I'll sort of talk through the eye look as I'm going down the line. I kind of did this more very wearable, easy, like watercolor 70s Biba girl. That's kind of the colors that I'm going after. Got a little purple, a little gold, that type of vibe, but they're great for layering. I think they're super buildable. They're incredibly blendable. And like I said, have that more kind of watercolor finish. So they're not going to have like this crazy pigment. And I talk about this a lot with natural shadows. They don't have that swatch factor, especially with a finger swatch that some conventional shadows will. However, I think when you apply these with a brush, it's really beautiful when you layer them of course even more so and when you use them wet that is always a way to sort of kick a shadow up a notch and what's so great is is that with natural shadows um you won't be harming the product at all by wetting it so free to use however you see fit i am quite a fan of the formulation um i wish they would come out with some palettes i hope that's in the cards for them but for now we can build our own the shadows are 20 dollars a piece so that's right on brand with sort of rms pricing and inside we are getting 2.5 grams worth of product. So you're really not gonna go through a whole one unless you use it all the time. And I see that very often, especially just like a single shadow and a more radiant finish. So I'm actually gonna be breaking this video up into two parts. Like I said, there are six color categories and 18 shades, so three within each. We're gonna start off with the first three just down the line as they're presented on the Integrity Botanicals website. So please, if you'd like to see the other shades, keep your eyes peeled for part two. You'll see me looking very similarly and uh, it will be immediately following this video probably a couple days after or so. So we're gonna start off with the Enchanted Moonlight category, which is the EM category, and these are the purples and the burgundy shades. So first up is EM61. EM61 is a really pretty shade because it is in the purple category, but it is uh, has quite a bit of brown to it. So this is really a wearable purple shade. It is a little bit darker and does have that metallic finish that is um, on brand with how they uh, describe the light reflective properties and of course pairs beautifully with the cream shadows. This one has quite a bit of luminosity to it and it's more of a taupey plum color, which is a very, very wearable shade of purple if you would like to dip your toes in that sort of area. Next up, we have EM64, Enchanted Moonlight 64. And this is a similar color to the one we just mentioned. Not quite as luminous, this one. And this one is a little bit deeper. So of course, every category would look really good together. You kind of have like a light 
medium dark situation. This one is a little bit darker than the one I just mentioned, a little bit less luminous. So this would be great to sort of build up the crease a little bit in a purple look or it looks really pretty with gold or you know you have creative freedom over that but those two pair beautifully together and would make a very nice gradation sort of eye look. A purple smoky eye would also be gorge. Then finally we have EM68 and this is the one where you look at the pan you're like ooh, definitely the most interesting of the shades um, and this one has a really beautiful texture to it when you do uh, swatch it which I love because purples can be incredibly tricky and this one is so unique. It is this very cool little bit of lavender but mid-tone purple. It's like the shift, the luminosity pulls very, very lavender lilac and really packs a punch. So I did a blend out the shadow underneath my eye with that. So if you're getting a little hint of that cool purpley tone, that's this guy. And um, I have yet to sort of pack it all over the lid because this is a newer one in my collection. But I am really excited to do that. And if you guys want, maybe that would be a fun video to do for spring, incorporating a little bit more color. And you guys know I've always loved purple. It suits green and brown eyes very, very well, as well as being a very wearable color. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into the Garden Roses. I think this is my favorite category. This is the pink category, you know, and that's a very broad spectrum, but this is one of the first shadows I purchased from the collection um, is GR19, which we'll get to. But when they first come out, I like had to have the shade and I have used it ever since. Um, so first up, let's talk about GR12. This is a really pretty beigey, rosy tone. This is going to be a really popular one. This is one of those shades that I love a lot because they're a one and done eyeshadow look. You could take this, sw uh, put it all over the lid, then just buff a little bit into the crease to intensify it just a little bit. Or you could apply something like this over the RMS cream shadow and embrace and kind of let that pink shine through but kind of uh, dull it down just a little bit because this has more of a uh, beigey tone to it. It's really pretty. You apply a little bit of eyeliner, blend it out, some mascara, and you would be ready to go all day, every day. Then we have the shade GR19, which is in a very similar vein as that one. You can kind of see a theme within the shade ranges, but this one is a little bit deeper. And this one, the shift of it, it has like a very gorgeous shift that I hope is picking up on camera. It's like a peachy pink, that shift. So the base of it is that pretty brownish rosy beige color and then it has a shift that pulls a little bit more pinky peach. There's a lot of dimension to it. Again, a good one for all over the lid or a good one to build out the crease once you've used uh, GR12 all over the lid. Finally, my favorite one, the first one that I ever purchased from the RMS Swift Shadow Collection. This is GR19 and this is the one that's the most really pink. Like when you see it, you're like, yeah, it's definitely like a pinky purpley sort of shade. It's beautiful. Um, again, not too light, not too dark, would also pair really well with Embrace. This would really intensify Embrace because Embrace is that gorgeous pink color. This is really quite pink, um, but not too light. So it's not a highlight shade. You could definitely put this all over the lid and make it look really, really stunning. And we are going to round out this particular video with Sunset Beach. This is one that I think is probably the most popular in the line along with the GR. And Sunset Beach are all of our yellows and our golds. And I do have one on my eyes today, so we are getting there. But first up is the shade SB43. Now SB43 is another one of the first ones that I picked up. I uh, think this would look really good with Lunar. This would look really good with, uh, what's that other one? There's another pale one that I'm thinking of, but I'll link my cream shadow video down below so you could sort of see what would work with what if that's how you want to use them. I do have a little bit of this shade right in the inner corner here, and it's just this pearlescent sort of um, champagne-y tone. This one is a little bit more sheer than the other shades in the collection, but it is a lighter color. So if that doesn't bother you, um, this is definitely one you can get down with. It will apply a little bit of brightness to the inner corner, but it's not that stark bright highlight, which I like starkness, but I know not everyone does. So if you don't, that might be a good one for you. Then we have the shade SB46. Now I did apply the cream shadow and Lucky all over my lid today and SB46 is a shade that I went over to kind of lock it down. Lucky is more of a penny color, so Solar may have paired a little bit better with this, but this color here is just a gorgeous true golden, a, go a gorgeous true golden tone. 
Woo, tongue twister. But yeah, it's very, very yellow. It's that yellow, gold, beautiful color. Can really pack a punch. I went a little bit more softer. I let that be the statement and everything else is very hazy, very pale eyeliner I'm wearing as well. One of my favorite shades, and if you like gold shadows, that one will not disappoint. And then finally, we have the shade SB48, which is similar to the one I just mentioned, but it's a little less yellowy and a little less intense. This is more like in the middle and that one's a little bit more intense, but they are comparable. I wouldn't say that you need both in that collection, but um, maybe someone of a, I don't even know how I would describe this. I prefer 46 because it's a little bit more radiant. So this one's a little bit more subdued. So if you want that more subdued look, then SB48 is the shade for you. All right, you guys, that is the first half of the RMS Swift Shadows. We got through all the purples and burgundies, the pinks, yellows, and golds. If you want to see all the grays and blacks, the greens and browns, and beiges and tans, then please subscribe so you can catch my next video. If you want to see exactly what shades I have on my eyes here, if you'd like a tutorial, let me know. But in the meantime, I will include all the products I'm wearing in that description box down below so you guys can check it out. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I will provide swatches by category in the description box down below so you guys can really see how they are in comparison to each other. I always like to do that for you and get real time swatches, which is always very much appreciated. But thank you guys so much for watching as always. Please check out all of our social media. It is always linked in that description box down below and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.